but advice number four. He has kept in touch with you all of this time. That must mean that you mean something to him. This is a series based on the comments made by people who fail to understand the true nature of narcissists and the narcissistic dynamic. Whilst these comments may be well-intentioned, they are incorrect, perpetuate misunderstandings, and in many cases create false hope, dashed expectations and perilous outcomes. In this instance, I examined the phrase where the fact that the narcissist has continued to keep in touch with an individual, which of course is hoovering or throwing comfort crumbs in the direction of the victim, and therefore a well-meaning advisor, not understanding that it is a narcissistic dynamic, says, well, he's kept in touch with you through all of this time, therefore you must mean something to him. It's often the case that a victim of our kind finds that the as-yet-unidentified narcissist continues to keep in touch with them. As I've explained on many occasions, we will always look to hoover you, whether it's post-escape or post-disengagement, because we need to assert control over you when you come up on the radar, and there is the prospect of fuel, character traits and residual benefits. On top of that, there is the potential opportunity to draw you back into the formal relationship. Whether we hoover you is determined by the need for there to be a hoover trigger, and then the hoover execution criteria to be met. If you are unaware of the nature of the person that you have become entangled with, i.e. you don't know that this person is a narcissist, it is highly likely that you will keep triggering the hoovers, and the bar will be set low on the criteria, which means that you will be regularly hoovered. This may seem to somebody like the narcissist is just keeping in touch with you, wanting to see you, perhaps explaining why things didn't work out, organising to meet up to address outstanding issues between us, perhaps the repayment of money or the return of property. Those are the most likely views taken where the dynamic has been between narcissist and intimate partner primary source, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend. It does not end there, however. In this dynamic, you will have been devalued, and this will cause you to question certain behaviours that you have experienced and witnessed. If you are an intimate partner secondary source, shelf variety or dirty little secret, you may well not have experienced any sustained devaluation, and maybe not even corrective devaluations, or at least not recognise them as such. And instead, you are taken off the shelf at certain intervals, picked up and put down, and we keep coming back to you, spending time with you, sending you pleasant messages, as we future fake you and provide comfort crumbs. There is no traditional malicious behaviour towards you, and yet you find yourself not elevated to the position of intimate partner primary source. So you find it is strange that you are not referred to as the girlfriend, or that you don't meet our family or friends. Whether you were the intimate partner primary source and you are now being repeatedly hoovered, or you are the intimate partner secondary source who keeps getting picked up and put down, these ongoing interactions can last for years. You are now in our fuel matrix, and whilst you may never return to the position of intimate partner primary source or ever be crowned as such, you remain an appliance within our fuel matrix that we are entitled to control and draw fuel from. This leaves you perplexed. We are intimate with you, or we have been. We talk of future plans with you. We appear to confide in you. Yet, there is no sensation of being in that formal, intimate relationship of partner, spouse, boyfriend or girlfriend. This leaves you puzzled as to what you mean to this person and why we keep engaging with you, even though there appears to be no end game in sight. Labouring under this situation of being confused as to not having any definite relationship status, the fact that this is this shifting sands, the fact that it's neither a relationship nor a non-relationship in terms of there being nothing but something in between, you end up seeking advice from a third party who listens to you explain the nature of the dynamic to them. They are likely to gloss over the devaluation if you were once the intimate partner primary source, preferring not to get involved in the conflict again, 
and instead focus on what appears to be a more constructive interaction now, as you're being hoovered. Although, of course, you and the advisor don't realise what this is. While, whether it is being hoovered or being placed on the shelf and removed from it, this advisor will deduce that our continued interest in you and our efforts to keep in touch with you, which may be strenuous at times, for instance, tracking you down after you've moved, means that we are clearly interested in you, and therefore this should be regarded as a good thing. It is not. The advisor is likely to suggest that because you clearly mean something to us because we're keeping in touch, you should therefore continue this engagement with us, perhaps looking to increase it if we may remain interested, perhaps elevating it into something more meaningful, suggesting perhaps that we're a little bit uncertain, that we lack confidence and that we're looking for you to make the first move. Such a suggestion is incorrect. The only things that you mean to us are in accordance with the prime aims of control and fuel character traits and residual benefits. This prolonged contact is born out of our need to secure these prime aims and because you belong to us by being part of the matrix. We want to keep drawing fuel from you. When you come up on the radar, we have to control you and therefore we do this through the repeated hoovering. Even though we may never put the formal relationship or girlfriend and boyfriend, for instance, back into place. We do this through taking you off the shelf and engaging with you as an intimate partner secondary source and then putting you back there when we turn to somebody else. We will continue to do this for as long as we are able. Perhaps we will restore you to the position of intimate partner primary source following these hoovers, or we might promote you from intimate partner secondary source to intimate partner primary source. And of course, your continued engagement with us appears to have paid off. In the short term, yes. But ultimately, that promotion or restoration is a poison chalice, as your devaluation as intimate partner primary source will always come about. If there is no restoration or promotion, you will be kept in this state of purgatory never precisely sure what you are to us. You see us sometimes, and then not on other occasions. You hear of us doing things with family, but you're not invited to join in. You're excluded from certain social occasions. You feel close to us because of the way we make you feel when we are with you. But at the same time, there feels like a gulf between us, because we are not admitting you entirely into our lives. You feel like the other woman or the other man, the friend with benefits, the secret shag. You may feel like you are permanently in waiting, and if you feel it is the last one, you're absolutely correct. You are permanently in waiting, as you are there at our whim and our pleasure. If we want to engage with you, we will. If we do not, we won't. By convincing you that this elongated song and dance translates into you meaning something to us, your advisor has given you bad advice. They've given you false hope that you're special to us, that we will make good on all these future fakes, on all those tempting promises, and that those comfort crumbs will somehow gather together to make a relationship cake. They might, but it won't to be your won't but it will not be to your taste in the end, and more likely, they will not, and five years later, ten years later, twenty years later, you are still the one, waiting for us to call and pick you up as you realised that your life has been placed on hold, and all because you were made to think that this narcissistic behaviour of hoovering and shelving denoted that you were special and that you meant something to us. If you recognise this behaviour in your dynamic with someone, or you recognise that it is happening to someone else you know and care about, don't commit the error of the ignorant and give them bad advice. Instead, enlighten yourself or them to the reality of what is going on and what awaits you or them. This is shelving behaviour with a narcissist and you don't mean something to us. You are our possession. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.